It is a sober Monday morning in America. We are seeing just increasingly troubling and difficult times. And uh, it's a great time to go and seek the Lord, isn't it? So we will be looking to God in Psalms 42 and 43. Um, put these together because really the best evidence is that in the original, this was one psalm. And then at some point they were separated out into two psalms. And so we're just going to sort of put them back together and treat them as one psalm this morning. I don't know if you saw the news last night at all, but there were, again, um, serious riots and burning and looting and destruction across our country, Washington, D.C., uh, St. John's Episcopal Church, which many presidents have gone and visited, has been there since the 1800s, set on fire, at least in the basement level, and uh, just things are, are, are troubling. I mean, there's a lot of troubling things right now, right? We're still dealing with COVID-19, although that's sort of been pushed to the back of our minds and we almost forget about it, but there are still thousands and thousands of people dealing with COVID-19 and still people dying and still struggling to find effective treatment, still researching a vaccine, but uh, it's been one week since the death of George Floyd and uh, boy, we have been torn apart by this chaos and this violence and you know certain groups are taking advantage of the of the anger and the discontent to to push things in a more violent and radical direction and uh, there's a lot going on churches are reopening making decisions about reopening for us as a church this is the week that we're sort of pushing toward reopening uh having gathered worship again on sunday so there's a lot that's on our minds and hearts, and uh, and we need the Lord, don't we? So let's pray to him, and then we'll dig into Psalm 42. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you are our rock, and that you never fail, and that you never change. We live in a world where so many things have failed us, seemingly. Things that we take for granted, things that we are guilty of putting our hope in. And it seems like things are falling apart. And yet, Father, you are the rock who never fails and who never changes. And so would you please, Father, this morning, redirect our hearts to you through your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Psalm 42 and 43. This is written to the choir master. It is a maskil of the sons of Korah. Sons of Korah were a group of people who led the music, um, particularly in the restoration after the um, exile, but also before the exile. And a maskil is, is a teaching psalm. So this is written to train us in righteousness. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and from Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. 
all the day long, saying, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. And we see that refrain, right? It's twice in Psalm 42, again in Psalm 43, and that's one of the things that tells us that these were once one psalm with one refrain. And there's also progression. I don't feel like we get the answer, uh, any sort of resolution, really, until we get to Psalm 43, uh, verses 3 and 4. Because notice what he's longing for at the beginning is the fact that he used to, with the sons of Korah, they used to, Go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. That was the longing and remembrance. And then the toward the end, the resolution comes, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with the lyre, O oh my God. So one of the things that we should learn from Psalm 42 is that when we are in distress, when we are overwhelmed and in turmoil and suffering, when the world seems out of control, the worship of God and particularly the gathered worship of God's people, it's the procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival, it's the holy hill. The gathered worship of God's people is like the anchor for our souls. It, it, it reorients us to who is our hope and to where is our strength, right? It, it recenters us and focuses us on what we really need. And that's why I am looking forward to, Lord willing, being able to gather again for worship on Sunday because we need it. We need to be gathered together and worshiping God to remind ourselves of who he is. Notice the desperation that this psalm begins with. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. We live in a world where there's a lot of distraction and there's a lot of God substitutes. So there's a lot of other things that sort of grab our attention and promise us some measure of relief, some measure of deliverance, and, and yet they're inadequate. We know that, right? What is our heart really panting for? What is our soul really longing for? It's for God. It's for God. Um, and he, this psalmist, the Psalms of Korah, they're desperate for God. And so we are longing for the one who made us, the one who saves us, the one who keeps us, because he is our hope. And then we get this refrain. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? He's, he's, he's talking to himself. You see, uh, there's a great principle in growing in Christ, growing in our gospel uh, apprehension and application. And that is, we spend a lot of time listening to ourselves, to the whining and the complaining and the murmuring of our own hearts, and not nearly enough time speaking to ourselves the truth of God, the gospel. So here he is, Psalm 42, 43 is very much preaching the gospel to ourselves. It's proclaiming, and it begins with this question, what's 
What's wrong with you? What's going on with you? Why are you cast down? Why are you in turmoil? And we could answer back and say, well, you know, what are we up to? 105,000 Americans that have died of COVID-19 worldwide. There's hundreds of thousands of people that have died in two months time. We've got, you know, the, the, the brutal killing uh, of a man that was caught on camera and, and displayed across the country. Then we have these demonstrations that turn to riots with burning and looting and, and, and everything just seems to be falling apart. There's such anger, there's such division. Of course, we're going to be in turmoil. Of course, we're going to be cast down. Okay, so take that. But then we need to go to the second half of this. Hope in God. Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. The word used here for God is Elohim. And this is the name of God that denotes his strength and his power. And it's when we are weak and it's when we feel cast down, it's when we're in turmoil, that we need to remember that God is our strength and our power, that he is unfailing. He is God the rock, God the fortress, and he's the one who is steadfast. He's steadfast. So there's, there's some indication here that God is, you know, this is maybe written from the time of exile when when the people of Israel were cast out of the land and they are remembering and longing and it feels like God's discipline, God's uh, chastisement uh, as a father is, is, is pouring over them. But then also his love comes to them. Wherever we are, God may be disciplining us, but even in his discipline, he loves us. We may be in distress, but even in that distress, even if God is sending the distress, he also brings us comfort. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Notice he's pouring out his heart in honesty before God. He is dealing with the Lord in honesty and in earnestness. He's not trying to pretend like everything's okay. True heartfelt worship before God is not a matter of putting on a mask and pretending like everything's okay. It's a matter of dealing with God uh, from the depth of our soul and embracing the strength of who he is. God's not afraid of our doubt, of our fear, of our turmoil. He wants us to bring it to him. So again, we get the refrain, why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. I love this in verse uh, two here. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. So God is our refuge. He's our shelter. He's our, he's our hiding place. And yet, it looks like God has rejected because he's not able to gather for worship. That's one of the things that's really on the heart of the psalmist here is, I can't gather for worship. I go about mourning and I'm oppressed by the enemy because I'm far from the house of God, far from the people of God. So you are my refuge. I need you to vindicate me. You are my refuge. I need you to defend me. And what I need more than anything else is for you to send out your light and your truth. This is a light refers to God's truth and righteousness. Let them lead me and lead me where? Lead me to your holy hill and to your dwelling, to the altar of God, so that I can praise you, so that I can worship you. That should be the longing of our heart. We need to, we need to train our hearts. Again, this is a mass skill, and that's important to we see that <coughs> in the title. And that's a psalm for teaching, training, instruction. And so what we need to remember when we're in distress is we need God. We need the worship of God together with his people. We need to train our hearts to be thirsting for God and not so distracted by things that keep us amused, but keep us ultimately restless and dissatisfied. 
because nothing can satisfy us but the Lord and his worship. Let's go before him now and pray. Father, we are in distress and in turmoil in many ways. At least I know my heart is this morning. I am so concerned by so many different levels of what I'm seeing, even among your people. Such anger and hostility, such lack of empathy and love for one another, name-calling and blame-shifting and while cities burn and businesses are destroyed and lives are threatened. Father, we need you. Even more than we need a resolution to the COVID-19 pandemic, even more than we need a resolution to this racial tension and rioting that's gripped our country, we need you. We need our hearts to be held by you and sheltered by you. And we need to find our satisfaction in you. And then we need to go out into the world in the strength that you alone can provide so that we can truly be ambassadors for Christ. Not political partisans arguing for our point and trying to show people that we are right, but we need to be ambassadors for Christ, salt and light, a healing, restorative, preservative, thirst-causing, truth-telling influence in the world. And we can't do that on our own. We need you. And so, Father, would you draw our hearts to yourself throughout this day today, even as we prepare, hopefully, Lord, please, to be able to gather together for worship again on Sunday and to lift our voices together as your people. Father, would you work in our hearts to give us that longing for you and that we would not be so easily distracted, but be the object of our desire and be the strength of our life. We do pray for peace for our country. You do pray for resolution. We pray for your church to be speaking the gospel of peace that alone brings peace. And we ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I know it was a little bit heavy this morning, but, you know, I, my heart feels heavy this morning. And then when I turned to Psalm 42 and 43, I felt like God was meeting me right there. So I hope this is helpful to you, and I hope that you have a wonderfully blessed day. And uh, we'll look forward to Wednesday. We'll get together and look at Psalm 45, and then Friday it'll be Psalm 42.